witness today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Happiness today is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind, joy today is mine. Amen, amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Uh, I want to welcome each and every one of you today, amen, to our noonday worship over here at the EBC. We call it the Pit Stop. Amen. Where each and every Wednesday we gather at 12 o'clock noon to get our midweek fill up. And can I tell you, God has a blessing in store for you this day. We want to take a moment to invite the presence of the Lord in our space. But before we do, I want you to reach down on that device of yours. I want you to hit that share button because we want others to be blessed by all that shall transpire in this hour. Come on and pray with me. God, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for today. We thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to gather with our brothers and our sisters to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord God, for the pit stop. We thank you uh, for the opportunity to come together to, uh, to grow in your word and grow in your grace. We thank you, Lord God, and we pray for a fresh anointing of your spirit that all that is said and done in this hour will be done, Lord God, uh, that we might be bless heavenly father that we might draw nearer to you that the lost would be found the unsaved would get saved the body would be edified and the greater good that you would receive glory honor and praise so have your way bless these singers bless these musicians bless all of our awaiting ears in the mighty matchless name of jesus we pray and ask it all amen amen come on and rest on your feet as we share together in our hymn of praise a amen i'm on the battlefield for my Lord and I promised him that I would serve him until I die I'm on the battlefield for my Lord I am on the battlefield for my Lord yes I took the master's hand and I joined the Christian band. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I left my friends and kindred, bound for the promised land. The grace of God upon me, a Bible in my hand. The distant land I trod, crying sinner, come to God. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And now when I met my Savior, I met him with a smile. He healed my wounded spirit and on me as his child. Around the throne of grace, he appoints my soul a place. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Promise him that I 
him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I won the battlefield for my Lord. Hey, amen, 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 amen. Uh, as you go to your seat, Deacon Slade, if you would, come on and lead us to the throne of grace. Amen. Please pray with me, saints. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us to come together again that we might lift up the name of Jesus. That, Lord, we thank you for all those who've joined us here. We thank you for those who are joining us online. Father, we just thank you for this ministry that you've given us. Thank you for our pastor, Lord. Keep your anointing upon him. Fill him with your Holy Spirit anew every day. Pray that the word that he brings us today might be straight from you. Lord, we just praise you now for how you continue to show your grace and your mercy to us. We come confessing that we still fall short, Lord, and we need your help in everything we do. Father, we just praise you now for these times that we have to spend together with one another. We praise you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior, who paid that sin debt that we could never pay. Father, we just praise you now for continue to bless us with health and strength. Bless our seniors, especially those who join us here, those who are retired, those who have a time to come together with us online. We just praise you for every ear that's listening. We just praise you now for this opportunity we have. Bless the musicians, Lord, as they continue to help us to try to and try to help somebody to come to know Jesus Christ. We praise you for your word. Bless your word now, Lord, as it come forth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. If you want your body, if you want your body healed, tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Power, need more power. Tell him what you want. If you need more power, tell him what you want. If you need more power, tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Jesus, he's on the main line. He's on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Amen. 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 I'm so glad. Amen. That we serve a prayer answering God. Amen. Come on and rest on your feet as we shall share in our scripture lesson for this early afternoon found in the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Amen. Uh, we're going to begin at verse 19, conclude at verse 23. Again, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, uh, beginning at verse 19 from the New Living Bible Translation, which reads, That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hand and hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, 
so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. May the Lord add a blessing, amen, to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Amen. Uh, it's my prayer, amen, that you would uh, indeed pray that the Lord would speak to all of us today as we share what thus saith the Lord, that the Lord would open up our hearts, open up our minds, open up our spirits, and certainly that the Lord would speak to, through, and even in spite of me, that we are all blessed. So after our music ministry blesses us, we're going to sit in our tent door to see what thus saith the Lord to us at this hour. Amen. Amen. We come with some good news for everyone today, and that is, I don't care what you might be going through, but Jesus can fix it. He might not fix it in the time you want him to, but he will fix it out of life. and join me back again in this 20th chapter of the Gospel of John. Um, from, I'm going to read it again, beginning at verse 19. 
That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you uh, do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. I, I want to talk to us uh, uh, on this, this, this second week after, after the resurrection of Christ. I, I want to talk uh, to us from the subject, Lord, breathe on me. Lord, breathe on me. Saints, have you, have you ever gotten the wind knocked out of you? I remember Brother Donald growing up, coming up as a child, getting hit in the stomach. Lord, have mercy. Can't even talk. All of the breath just went out. I, I, I could not breathe. Matter of fact, it, it was a terrifying moment because in that moment it seemed as though time stood still. And the only thing that matters was me trying to catch my next breath. When you can't catch your breath, all, all that matters is, is breathing. But saints, for us today, getting the wind knocked out of us uh, can be considered a metaphor for the difficulties that we face in life. As a matter of fact, what we see in our text is truly an example of that. We all experience moments and seasons of loss, of grief, and significant life transitions, life changes, and the stress of living this life, as I have told you before, can knock the life out of you. When life comes at us as a, uh, a, a barrage of gut punches, walls of doubt can close in on us and really make it hard for us to catch our breath. And saints, when we can't breathe, we, 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 we are stopped in our tracks. And everything is on a virtual hold, if you will, until we get to the point in which we are able to breathe again. That's where the disciples are in our text. Y'all going to pray with me? Come on and follow me in the text. This is where the disciples are after the death of Jesus. They had just lost their teacher, their Lord, their friend, and they were experiencing not just grief, but a tremendous tremendous gut punch that literally knocked the life out of them. They had watched Jesus as he was arrested, tried, as he was sentenced to death, brutally crucified, then buried. And can I tell y'all, they were traumatized. Like many of the Jews, they, they, they had aspirations that Jesus was in fact the Messiah who had come to set them free from the Roman occupiers. But now all of a sudden, he was dead and hope was gone. Y'all going to pray with me? And the breath, if you will, had been knocked right out of them. And now as they are paralyzed by fear, we find them, according to our text, hiding behind locked doors, just trying to breathe. When, we, when you can't breathe, can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, nothing else matters. Now, watch this. Mary Magdalene had told them that Jesus was alive. And claim that she had seen him. But they could hardly believe that was true. And so now the mission of these disciples, that of preaching the good news, uh, that of being fishermen of men, it was now on hold as they tried so desperately just to catch their breath. Behind these closed and locked doors, but then... 
Suddenly, all of a sudden, I, I, like, I like when the Bible, Brother Donald, you, you, you know, depicts a situation that suddenly because that just gives me hope and lets me know that God is able to work some stuff out in all of our lives quicker than quick. Suddenly, the Bible says suddenly and unexpectedly and surprisingly, Jesus shows up. And he stands in their midst, in, in the middle of their fear, as they are locked in this claustrophobic room. Jesus just shows up. And saints, I want to tell you that Jesus will show up when he wants to, how he wants to, where he wants to. And, and even in your situation, that, that, that's why I don't be discouraged when you pray for answers and when you pray for, for, for God to work some things out. I, I heard you, Brother Reggie. Yeah, yeah, Jesus will fix some stuff. He may not fix it the way you want him to fix it, uh, but, but God's got a way if you trust him. A, a, amen. He's got a way of showing up when he wants to show up, how he wants to show up. And matter of fact, though I, I've learned uh, because I live long enough, I learned to know that what even what I want and, and what I think is best for me, God has a way of giving me even better than I can hope and even imagine. Yeah, I, 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 I can only see God working in a situation in one or two kind of ways, but God can flip that whole thing around. Lord, have mercy and take that mess that was meant for evil, that mess that was causing me fear and, and, and heartache and turn it into a great blessing for me. Here Jesus appears after, uh, uh, after his resurrection to the disciples and, and he steps in with his divine presence. And he does it to give comfort, to cheer, and to strengthen, and to lift them. He offers them peace and encouragement in the midst of their fear and uncertainty. The text says he shows up and he just gives them uh, those four little words, peace be with you. Now, this is a powerful statement of, of how Jesus uh, continues, uh, even in 2024, to encourage and, and, and to strengthen us in our lives, even when we face challenges and difficulties. And, and, and he does it through his presence. Anybody grateful for the presence of God? Yeah, Jesus appears to his disciples on that Sunday evening as they are gathered, locked away in fear of the Jewish leaders. But despite their fear and despite their isolation, Jesus comes to them, speaks peace and reassures them. And that's good news for us today because it demonstrates how Jesus is always with us. I say he's always with us. He, even in those dark moments, I tell you, he, he's always there comforting, a, amen, and just when we need him most. Somebody once declared that there is no pit so deep that God's love uh, still uh, can't go deeper. Here, saints, Jesus, he calms these brothers' fears before he does anything. Y'all see that there. He speaks peace. He calms their fear. Y'all, y'all, y'all chill out. Everything's all right. Because he knows uh, all is not well within his disciples. His disciples are experiencing the pressure of the world. However, Jesus comes with his living presence. Somebody shout living presence. The fact that he has risen from the grave, it does something to their spirits, amen, even now. So Jesus, watch this, he invites the disciples, y'all see the text, to examine the evidence of his victory. He invites them to examine himself. I, oh Lord, I, yeah, come on, y'all stay with me. He invites them, look, look at my hands. Look at my side. All in affirmation of Jesus' identity. Jesus shows up in the middle of their fears and invites them to, watch this, have a personal encounter with him. And every one of them were, were welcome to examine him for themselves. 
And that examination brought excitement. It brought joy because they saw him for themselves. They saw the risen Savior for themselves. Matter of fact, Mary Magdalene's testimony of her encounter with Jesus, it was not enough to move them uh, towards catching their breath and moving uh, beyond where they were. Uh, But because they had to have an encounter for themselves. God never intended for us to uh, to live for him based on somebody else's experience. Now you got to have your own experience with God all yourself. But watch this. Jesus, he, 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 he just doesn't speak uh, what I call these wishful shalom blessings. He just not speaks peace to them and, and he just doesn't allow them to touch him. Because he wants more for us than just to have, watch this, an initial encounter. No, 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 no. He, he wants more for us than that. He, he, he doesn't want us to have this, uh, uh, this initial contact and then go back to life as usual. Here Jesus, he knows that the disciples, just like you and I, in this, in moments of loss, in moments of grief, moments of doubt, and moments of fear, uh, he, he know that we struggle to get it together. Amen. So, so for a second time, y'all, y'all still with me in the text? A second time, he again speaks peace to them. But watch this. This time, he reminds them of their mission. He says, as the Father has sent me. So I send you. Here saints, Jesus, he he again identifies himself with God the Father. As he tells the uh, disciples by whose authority he's done his work. He says, look, as the Father has sent me. And then he passes the job to his disciples. The spreading of the good news of salvation uh, around the world. He says, as the Father sent me, uh, I also send you. As the Father sent Jesus, Jesus now sends his followers, all of us, to share, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And this statement not only empowers the the disciples to continue Jesus' mission on earth, but it also serves as a reminder to them that they are not alone while they are doing it. Jesus is sending them out in his authority and his power, assuring that they have the resources and the guidance and everything that they need to complete the work. Anybody grateful that the Lord has given you everything you need to complete the work? Because saints, watch this. Jesus does something, uh, then he does something for them that they need it. Y'all see it? He, he does something that they need it. The Bible says he Breathe on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus here gives his disciples a special filling of the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, a foretaste, if you will, of what believers would experience on the day of Pentecost. Because in order to do God's work, we need the power, the anointing and the presence of God enabling us. Come on, talk to me, somebody. We we can't do God's work in our strength. Nichols can't do God's work in Nichols' strength. Uh, Brother Ross can't do God's work in Ross's strength. Brother Davis can't do God's work in Davis' strength. No, we need the power and the presence of God. We need to be operating in the strength of our, our great God. Because we need God to give us strength, to give us power, to give us life, uh, to accomplish everything that he has called us to do. When, 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 when Adam, the, the first man, was created, he did not come al- Y'all remember the story. He, he, he did not come alive until God breathed into him. Y'all, y'all know the Bible, don't you? The breath of life. 
Now through the same breath of God, Christ has imparted eternal and spiritual life here. And with this embreathing, if you will, came the power for his disciples to do God's will on earth. Jesus was giving the disciples power, uh, guidance, uh, the presence of God to preach the good news so that people's sins might be forgiven. Jesus breathed on his disciples and tells them to receive the Holy Spirit. And this act sign signifies the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit in the lives of every believer, equipping us with the necessary gifts, equipping us with the necessary abilities to carry out our mission. The Holy Spirit serves as a constant source of encouragement, providing guidance, wisdom, strength as we navigate this Christian walk. Matter of fact, they're, 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 it's the spirit of, of, of the Lord that gives us power so that we can Come alive and breathe again. There is an old hymn as I get ready to go to my seat that, that, that declares that it is no secret what God can do. Matter of fact, they say what he's done for others, he can do the same for you. Look at here. When, when, when the disciples saw Jesus in that room and when they heard his words of peace as he breathed on them, his life giving breath spirit, they were transformed. I, I told you in the Garden of Eden, Adam, who was perfectly formed, had no life until God breathed into him uh, the breath of life. Then he started walking with God. Uh, let me give you just one more. Ezekiel in that valley of dry bones. Y'all remember that, don't you? Bones that were dead and bones that were in disarray. Oh, but when God breathed into them dead bones... Those bones came to life, stood up, and became a force to be reckoned with. I wish I had some folk who hear me today. Because in that valley, God's spirit came, uh, the Bible says, from the four corners of the earth, which lets us know, Brother Donald, that there ain't no place in the world that God's spirit, his presence, can't reach you. There's no place in the world that his spirit, his presence can't lift you, can't redirect you, can't comfort you, can't cheer you, can't quicken your dead spirit, can't make you alive again, can't mend your broken pieces. There's no place. So my prayer for us today as I go to my seat is Lord breathe on us. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us anew uh, that, that we may walk in your love and that we may do what you would want us to do. That, you, that we may live the way you would want us to live. Because, Lord, when, if, 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 when you breathe on us, our lives will never be the same again. Lord, breathe on us. God, we thank you. We thank you for this, this, this little passage here uh, that, that many folk just skip right on over. But we thank you, Lord God, for the reminder today, Lord God, of the power of your presence and the fact that, Lord, you have not left us here alone. Lord God, with all of the, the, the evils of the world, all of the demonic spirits that are present, Lord, you have not left us alone, but you have given us exactly what we stand in a need of to be able to accomplish the mission that you have placed us on. So our prayer is, Lord, Spirit of the living God, that it would fall fresh on each and every one of us. That even today, Lord, we pray for a fresh anointing of your spirit, Lord God, to, to, to go forth doing that which, Lord, you have tasked us to do. 
to lift you up before a world that needs you, to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus, to share our witness that folk might come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Then, Heavenly Father, I pray for my brother, I pray for that sister who, under the sound of my voice, who may not know you in the pardon of their sin. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would move in their heart in such a way that you would not let them rest, but indeed that you would make them uneasy until they come yielding, crying, what must I do to be saved? And I'm thankful that today is a good day to get saved. And my brother and my sister, if that is you today, I got good news for you. You can get saved right now. You can get saved this very moment. Jesus, even now, standing at the door of your heart, knocking, wanting to come in, just waiting for you to accept him. Ah, oh, but, 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 but I'm so glad he, 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 you have the opportunity even now. The Bible says that if I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, verily I shall be saved. Look, you've heard this word. Bless you. Bless you. You, 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 you. You've heard this word. You heard this word. It has pricked your heart. Lord have mercy. And it's your desire to come. It's your desire to yield your life to him. Ah, all you can do is you can do like Brother Ann. Walk down this aisle. Give the Lord your, your give this preacher your hand. Give the Lord your heart. But look, if you're online, you can just simply pray this prayer. God, I thank you for your word on today. I thank you that you came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Lord God, I confess that I, I'm not right. Having been right can never get right unless you make me right. I, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I want to be saved. I want you to come into my life. I, I, I want you to, to rearrange my life. I want you to save me, heal me, deliver me, set me free. Look, if you pray that little simple prayer right there in all sincerity, I got some great news for you. I say I got some great news for you. You say next step on your Christian journey is to get into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church of the living God whereby you can grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Savior. Come on and rest on your feet if there's another Come on, give the Lord your life. Where he shed his blood. Where he shed his blood. Get right. Get right with God. Get right, get right with God. Everybody ought to get right with God. And do it now. And do it now. Get right. Get right with God. He will show you. He will show you how. Down at the cross. Down at the cross. Where he shed his blood. Where he shed his blood. Oh, get right with God. Get right, get right with God. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Amen. Certainly, we, we, we're grateful to God. We, we bless the Lord. I mean, I don't even need the card, but <laughs> amen. Come on. Everybody, everybody might not know, amen, brother Ant, amen, but brother Ant, he, he, he's, man, he's been with us eight years. Eight years. So Y'all see how hard I got to preach. <laughs> eight years thank thank god for brother ant who's been working with our music ministry amen all 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 these years who's coming to unite amen a amen you 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 can't you you can't you can't you can't you can't hang around this place amen without something rubbing off on you a amen because it's the best place to be in southeast dc washington dc amen all across the country so bless you my brother Bless you. Brother Ann is also serving, amen, as, as, uh, along with Sister Belinda. Amen. Sister Belinda is our music coordinator, and Brother Ann is our music director. Amen. So we're certainly grateful to, brother, uh, to God for Brother Ann. Amen. And he's coming on his Christian experience. Amen. So third Sunday, amen, just come on down. We, and we're enjoying the saints, amen, as we give the right hand of fellowship. Amen. God bless you. To God be the glory. For the great things that he continues to do. Look, my brothers, look, my sisters, as, as we have, as you've had this wonderful opportunity and privilege to worship our God in this space, even in your space at home, you have the opportunity now to worship our God in giving. Amen. Amen. 
uh, our giving platform is easy tithe simply download it uh, from the Google Play Store the App Store or open up your phone's camera app uh, to that QR code and uh, it'll take you right to uh, our, our, uh, our giving platform which is easy tithe follow the prompts and proceed to give we know that our God he loves a cheerful giver come on and hold up your gifts and or your giving device we want to ask God's blessing upon them. God, we, again, we, we, we thank you for today. We thank you for the presence of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for breathing on us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word that has gone forth and the fact that we have grown up just a little bit more because of your presence. And we thank you now, God, for the opportunity to give back a portion of that which you have blessed us to receive. So, so God, we ask that you are blessed the gift and the giver, that all that is given will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, that ministry will continue to go forth. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. And amen. We'll put you in the hands of our ushers. Amen. As our music ministry blesses us. things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. grateful to God on, on today for his presence with us. Uh, we're grateful, certainly, uh, for, for Brother Ant, amen, uh, allowing the Lord to lead him, direct him, amen, this way to unite with, with this, this, this body, and we're certainly grateful for each and every one of you. Uh, there, we, we, we invite, we, I want to thank everyone who joined us on last night as we met in prayer uh, on uh, via our, our, our Teleconference, amen, I invite you to join us tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. as we continue to pray and intercede on behalf of those who are on our sick and shedding list, certainly uh, our, our church family, the body of Christ, our nation, and in this world in which we live. Uh, there, there's so much that's going on that uh, we, we, we need to be in prayer. I said we need to be in prayer. And as a matter of fact, we need to be in serious prayer, amen. Amen. Uh, you look at what's going on, even over in the middle of e in the Middle East, things seem to be getting that pot seems to be bubbling more and more and more. I mean, and before you know it, if we're not careful, we'll be in World War Three. 
with everything that's going on. We, we, we need to pray. We, we, we need to pray. And we need to pray that we get right leadership. Leadership that, that first and foremost got some God in them. A, 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 amen. You know, we, everybody wants to look at policies and, and how these leaders benefit us. The first check box they need to have, they, they need to know Jesus. Amen. I don't, I don't care where you stand, what side of the aisle you stand on. If folk don't know Jesus, they don't need to be in leadership. Because folk who don't know Jesus are going to lead you straight to hell. Help us, Holy Ghost. Uh, so, so we need to be in prayer. So join us tomorrow at 6 a.m. Friday for our Impact Focus Discussion. Saturday for our Children's Church. Sunday, amen, 10 and 12, amen, this second Sunday, amen. I know our men and our children, amen, are poised to bless us. Also, I'm just going to give a shout out because I know Sister Connie is looking for, looking for those children, amen, amen. So your, your, grand, your, 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 your sons, your daughter, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your neighbor's children, whoever's children, amen. Scoop them up. <laughs> and bring them on in the house of the Lord. Eh? Amen. Come on in. There's no better place for them to be. Uh, we, 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 there, there are, uh, I, I need you to keep uh, these. We have a number of persons that are on our sick and shedding list that uh, uh, we, we continue to lift up in prayer. Uh, certainly, uh, Sister Blondell uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, family uh, and the passing of, of, of her mother, we want to continue to lift her and undergird her, certainly in prayer, uh, as well as uh, Sister Patrick and uh, her, her grandson, uh, Samuel Smith. We continue to pray uh, his strength and recovery, as well as Brother Coleman, uh, the Lovelaces, the Mingos, uh, in, in their, um, and, and Sister Wright in, in, in their moments of grief. We know that God, as well as Sister Caldwell, it was a blessing to see her uh, in the house, amen, at that 12 o'clock service on Sunday, amen. Uh, we continue to lift her uh, in prayer, as well as uh, uh, Brother James Brown, a amen. Um, Sister, uh, um, uh, Brother Willie Baltimore, Amen. Uh, Sister Moses and, 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 and others. Uh, come on, come on and, and, and join with me in, in, in a word of prayer. Come on and rest on your feet. Uh, we stand because that's that's a symbol of act of faith. Uh, that that our faith looks up to the Lord. I said that our faith is 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 looking to the one who's able to to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask and or think. That's what the psalmist declares. I, I, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. So as we, as, as we prepare to, to, to come, you know, we, we, we remember those who are on our, 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 our list. We remember certainly our nation. We remember our world. We, we remember our community. Come on, Sister Riddick. I want I want you to I want you to pray for I want you to pray for us. Come on down. We remember those certainly who have suffered loss. And we come because we trust a God who is able to turn some things around. Not some things, but all things. He's able to work in all of our situations. Amen. Thank you. Come on, sister. Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. Thank you mm -hmm. for being so good to us. Lord, when I look around and I see all the things you've done, my heart cries holy. I thank you for waking us up this morning. I thank you for everything I have, everything that the people in this world has. I'm praying for the United States of America. I hope that you teach me, teach the people how to love and believe in each other. I have had so many trials. I've had so many problems. But every time I look around, you are always there. And I ask that you please keep us safe. 
Now look over our children, Lord, they're dying and we can't seem to get a handle on it. And I ask that to you, that you stay with us, that you keep us, that you love us like you always do. And I ask all these things in the name of Jesus. I ask that he bless us. Amen. Amen. Look, my brothers and my sisters, I want to encourage you as we prepare to depart from this place, uh, wherever you go today, whatever you do, to be intentional with your witness. God puts in our path persons who need to hear the good news of the gospel and our witness of him in our life. And we have to be open and faithful to share. So God bless you. May heaven smile upon you until we meet again. May his peace be with you.